lift your voice and give God quality things. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Father, we honor you. We bless you. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. We bless you. Thank you for your mighty hand upon our lives. We acknowledge your goodness in our midst. And Lord, we thank you again and again and again. Tonight we pray that you speak to us. Grant us understanding. Grant us illumination. Even by your spirit. And we declare in the name of Jesus. That as always Jesus is revealed in our midst. And Jesus is glorified. In Jesus name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be in Zaria. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. Turn to your neighbor left and right and tell them the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. In Jesus name let me salute the leaders Zaria leaders let's give them a big God bless you for the incredible job that they are committed to doing the mighty things that they keep doing every time I have the opportunity to get the reports um, I'm very humbled at what God is doing and I've told you that leadership it's not about maintaining followers. It's about transforming supposedly ordinary people to become leaders. Hallelujah. We have several people in our midst and it's my joy and honor to acknowledge and welcome them. We're a house of honor. We do not take for granted every time they show up. Um, our father... And our mother, daddy, and mommy Tula, let's give them a big God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we are always honored to have him in our midst, the CEO in charge of Basawa, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony. Thank you so much, sir. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. And just stepping in is our father and our mother, Professor and Dr. Mrs. Onu. Let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. I hope I didn't omit every, anyone. You're here and you're scattered across the congregation, inside and outside. We honor you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We had a glorious session with the leaders this morning and um, we discussed a few things and God helping us, we trust that the truths we have learned will take us from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. The Lord inspired a few things in my heart to share with us. One of the things that I was telling the leaders in the morning during our training is the fact that one of the secrets of being a blessing to people is to bring teachings that are relevant to their needs teachings that are life applicable are we together it's important that the truths we communicate that they sustain the power to liberate people and we're committed in this house towards the holistic development of everyone so that we're not just limited to your spiritual growth and development alone but that every aspect of your life has the glory of God reflected in it. And tonight I'm inspired to teach um, on a subject I titled Good Success. Please write it down and then pay attention. Good success. Good success. For our text, let's go to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. We can see it projected. Let's read together. One to read. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then shall thou make thy way prosperous and thou shall have good success so this is this is god admonishing joshua who was now taking the baton of leadership after the departure of moses joshua chapter one starts with a summon god summons joshua and says moses my servant is dead and now he begins to guide him on the principles that would help him succeed and then the bible says among them he tells him that the secret to good success is found in verse 8 that you shall not let the law of the lord the book of the lord depart from your mouth you shall meditate during day and night that you observe to do according to all that is written therein write this down please the first point that i want us to get very clearly and without confusion and those across the overflows please make sure you are writing and paying attention the first thing i want you to know is that the bible is very clear as to the fact that it is god's desire that we live an excelling life please write it down it is god's desire that we live an excelling life it is not just god's desire that we serve him it is not just god's desire that we love him it is god's desire that the believer lives an excelling life he said oh lord our god how excellent is your name his name is not just powerful his name is not just mighty his name excels even in glory so write this down john 10 10 jesus was teaching and he said the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy that is satan's ministry he said but i am come that they may have life and to have it more abundantly other versions to say to have it to its fullest so you must convince yourself ladies and gentlemen that you are not just here just to love god and to serve god alone these are priorities but that in our dealing with god god's desire is that whilst we serve him we have an opportunity to live excelling lives hallelujah proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible there says but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more say more and more one more time say more and more by this scripture it means you should never have a better yesterday you should never look back and rejoice over your yesterday at the detriment of your today hallelujah that no matter what it is the glory that is seen in your life today it should pale with respect to the glory that is to come may that be your testimony it is god's desire that we live an excelling life unfortunately many believers are unable to capture this reality in their lives when you look at the life of the average believer it is not a good portrait of who god is what you will largely find in the life of the believer is passion for god and that is very important spiritual passion love for god love for the house of god but then you look around the life of many believers you cannot see the manifestation of the glory of god the word glory comes from the hebrew word kabod the greek is doxa it means the weightiness whatever makes an object valuable or desirable is its glory hallelujah praise the name of the lord that is very important whatever makes an object so the glory of this phone is found in its ability to either provide speed or high internet are we together now the glory of this mic is in its ability to amplify my voice so when we talk about the glory of god we mean all the characteristic features that make god god and the bible says god desires that it is revealed through the saints your life is glorious to the degree to which we see present in your life the factors that make god god his wisdom his power and all that makes god god are we following now so it's important to establish this 
I'm saying this particularly because many of us and most of us that come around this area, we usually, sadly but truthfully, we do not have many models that give us a balanced picture of God's idea as to how the believer should be. We know God's expectation today because there was a man called Abraham. Is that true? And the Bible says in Isaiah 51, it says, Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bore thee. It says, For I called him alone and I blessed him. So most of us come from families, most of us come from cultures where the people we saw around us were either people who were very spiritual but they failed in every other aspect of their lives or maybe a few people out of a great family you may find one or two people who lift their heads a bit at least within the context of that locality and then they reject god they resent anything god or you find people in between so it is difficult for many believers to attain onto this balanced state of excellence because we largely have not seen models that um, exemplify that it's like people choose certain aspects they either choose wealth at the detriment of their spiritual lives or they choose spirituality at the detriment of every other aspect of their lives but the destiny of the believer is found in genesis 24 and verse 1 it says and abraham genesis 24 and verse 1 was old and well stricken in age the bible says and the lord had blessed abraham in all things prophesy to yourself say all things that means eventually every aspect of your life should capture and reveal the glory of god are we following now i'm saying this because nothing will change in your life until you indoctrinate yourself to believe that regardless my current situation it is still the will of god for me to live an excelling life an excelling life is not a life of competition an excelling life is not a life of comparison an excelling life is not a life of saying i am better than you the bible says and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise so that is not what we are called into but that the bible tells us that god wants to use us in fact he says this in excellently in ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 give us please ephesians 2 and verse 10 it says for we are his workmanship his tools it says created in christ jesus unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in we are not just the sheep of his pasture we are not just his children the bible calls us his workmanship you know what that means that the tools that he uses like when you see a doctor his workmanship is his stethoscope and all that he uses to excel he's saying that we are his workmanship that means when the world wants to see how mighty god is he uses the believer just like tools to display the dimensions of power and glory that he has if you're with me say amen. amen it is a very difficult thing but you have to walk your way through believing that i may be in one room listen ladies and gentlemen i may come from a family where i'm currently staying in a mud house i may be wearing a torn cloth i may not have an opportunity to eat well but regardless the situation this one thing you must have at the back of your mind that my current situation can never define my destiny are we together now that it is god's desire that i live an excelling life please say it after me it is god's desire that i live an excelling life one more time say it is god's desire that i live an excelling life you try to make this confession on your own and you will be surprised at the mental enemies that will rise to challenge that statement the moment you make that statement your pocket answers who are you talking about you make that statement that 11 people in your family with the highest person not amounting to anything will answer the room you are staying leaking with water the inabilities that surround you these are the things that keep you down and you feel stupid for making that confession but the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Are we learning? Very important. 
I needed to take some time to stress this point because many people do not know or they have not assimilated it spiritually that God's desire is that we live an excelling life. Many are trying to live a competitive life. Many are trying to live a life of comparison. I am better than my brother. I am better than my sister. Out of my family, I am the only one who has risen. That's not what you are called to do. And you see, when you bring this point to your spirit, the devil will use all kinds of excuses. You've come from a family where nobody has risen. You've come from this and that. And it may be true as far as your current context is concerned. But let me tell you, I'm saying it again. Whether you are inside, whether you are outside, whether you are young or old, I don't care what the limitations are around your life. The first thing I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ is that it is God's desire for you to live an excelling life. Now, whether you actually live that excelling life or not is another discussion. But that in the mind of God, it is never his will for you to come and live walking around the earth a purposeless and a visionless life and then just die in shame and pain and reproach that cannot be the will of God are we together write this down our success in this kingdom brings glory to God one of the reasons why we must succeed is that our success in this kingdom brings glory to God write it down very simple statement but it is very profound our success brings glory to God John chapter 15 please give us verse 8 and then we jump to verse 16 John 15 and verse 8 let's read together in concert you can see it written ready one to read herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples. The Father is not glorified if you do not bear much fruit. Another word for much fruit is notable results. For those of you, I presume everybody should be following the teachings, but I did a series of teachings commanding salvation over territories. And I taught you in that teaching that your results are also preachers. That is a sermon only your results can preach you were never designed to be the only preacher are we together now your results are also preachers there is a sermon only your results can preach and if you do not attain to a point where you produce notable kingdom results you will rob your territory of a kind of evangelism the bible says if you do not believe me because of who I am, believe me for the work's sake. That means the work is also preaching. Hearing is my father glorified when you bear much fruit. He says, so shall ye be my disciples. Verse 16 says, ye have not chosen me. He says, but I have chosen you and ordained you. The word ordained means to commission, to legitimize your operation. I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Say amen. amen. That means in God's design, I repeat one more time for emphasis, you should never have a better yesterday. The believer should not sit down reminiscing on yesterday and discussing on yesteryears. The Bible says, listen carefully, that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, the same today and forever. That means if I look at your life, the version of you last year, the version of you beginning of this year should far exceed what you are now. And I'm not just speaking in terms of physical things alone. Are we together now? very important most believers do not know that becoming successful is ministry becoming successful is ministry write it down if i tell you list the various activities that translate to ministry you will say preaching you are right you will say giving you are right evangelism you are right but most people do not know that kingdom success is ministry 
Now, please pay attention because I'm going to be giving you a balance. When I talk about kingdom success, we're not talking about this mundane, godless pursuit that alienates Jesus Christ out of the system. Make no mistakes about it. That is not what I'm saying. But it's important for you to know that your success is not just a goal achieved. Your success is ministry. And the same way you pay attention to the preaching of the word, the same way you pay attention to every other dimension of ministry, you must pay attention to kingdom success. Are we together? Galatians 1.24 It's an anthem in this ministry. Simple but profound scripture. Let's read it together. One to read. And they glorified God in me. One more time. And they glorified God in me. They looked at my life and at the end of it, they said, God, you are great. May that be someone's testimony. That's what it means to be a living epistle. Apostle Paul said we are living epistles. You know what that means? That if somebody did not read his Bible and left home without reading the Bible, when he sees you, you become a continuation of his devotion. That your life opens up chapters in the Bible he could not read. So he finds out that the Bible is everywhere around him. The one in his room is just one of the many available. There are many living epistles. That someone who knew you before, if they know you now, your, your life and your results begin to shout it that God can lift any man from a dunghill to wherever. Is someone learning? In Matthew chapter 25, we we'll begin our reading from verse 14. We know it theologically to be the parable of the talents. Matthew 25. So Jesus is teaching on the kingdom of heaven and he's giving a parable that the parable, the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. The Bible says he called his own servants and delivered to them goods. Notice, he didn't give them a message. He gave them goods. 2015 now it says unto one he gave five talents unto another he gave two unto another he gave one to every man according to his several ability not according to his love for them according to their several abilities and straightway he took on his journey and when you read down for sake of time the bible says the guy who had five went and traded it he made five more the guy who had two went and traded it and made two more but the guy who had one in anger obviously jealousy pain did not do anything with his talent and the bible says he went to bury it in the ground the mistake is that you only bury seeds not talents you don't bury talents you bury seeds when you bury talents in the ground they don't grow it is seeds that grow and in anger he went to bury it and when the man came now the owner of the 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 goods he demanded accountability from them the one with five what have you done he said while you were away i was busy working on these five i have five more and he said well done thou good and faithful servant he says, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then the guy with two, he said, you gave me two and I didn't have time to compete with the guy who had five. I was focused doing my best and out of the two you gave me, I made two more. Same commendation. He says, thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things enter down into the joy of the lord now here is the lesson verse 24 the one who received one talent did not know that if he had done something with one if he did the same thing the guy with five did if he did the same thing the guy with two did he would have had one more and he would have gotten the same commendation are we together now the guy with five got well done not because he had five but because he brought five more. The guy with two, he didn't say this guy worked more than you. It would be unfair to expect 10 from the guy you gave two. So this gentleman 
would have done his best he would have gone to ask them and say what are you doing with your own let me at least do with my one and say well this is the one then after he produces the result he will now say but god what do you why did you give me one but he was angry lord i knew thee that thou art a hard man can you imagine it's like an employee talking to his employer reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed you see the kind of bitterness and the things that were in that man you see why he got one that one was even an act of mercy i was afraid and i went and hid the talent in the earth and lo here is your talent hear what jesus says to him thou wicked and slothful other versions will say unprofitable servant it says since you knew that i like reaping where i did not sow why didn't you go and give it in the bank so that at least i will have interest even if it was that means even if the guy brought a little percent he would have commended him for at least doing something are we together and he rebuked him the bible says take the talent from him and give it to the guy that had 10. it then means when a believer does not produce results it is possible that even your bishopric your bishopric it it defines the circumference of your relevance because you see i told you that every believer is a living epistle there is a sermon that your life and your results should preach and if you rob people from hearing that sermon god loves you but he loves other people who should hear you too eventually he will replace you and it is my prayer that nobody be replaced in this life many great things god can speak concerning you but it does not guarantee that you will walk in them let me tell you ladies and gentlemen there are many people today destined for glory destined for grace some of them have seen it prophetically but as it is right now many people never end up living one tenth of their prophetic destiny are we together now write this down when the bible says well don't write just listen before you write when the bible talks about good success it immediately suggests that there is bad success and let me talk a bit about bad success how do i know that the kind of success i'm pressing towards is good success or bad success i will tell you very simple bad success is any kind of result that you seek to achieve listen to me that you will have to give up your love for god are we together and the desire to be a blessing to attain it that means the condition for attaining unto bad success is that your soul suffers in the process the condition for attaining unto bad success is that in your desire to press for it people are wounded people are hurt you do not become a blessing while you are doing so you negate genesis chapter 12 from verse 2 and 3 it says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed is someone learning now why am i teaching you this because we live in a world right now unfortunately especially our generation there is an obsession for success there is an obsession to make it and the desperation continues to grow it looks like there is a stigma that comes upon your life if at a certain level certain results are not achieved financially and otherwise and so many people right now are under all kinds of pressure i must make it by any means i will do anything it does not matter what so there are people today joining all kinds of occultic groups all kinds of fraternities all kinds of gangs formally or informally because they desire to make it it looks like there is a way society celebrates you when you make it so finally you are rich now this car is your own this house is your own we have all kinds of slangs that define what we call success 
and unfortunately our generation is perpetually under pressure there are many people right now carrying self-inflicted burdens loads and luggages that did not come by God because of the pressure to prove a point there is bad success that the more you press your spiritual life is dying I must make the money by all means I must marry by all means I must have the child by all means I must grow up, go abroad by all means it does not matter what happens to my spiritual life your prayer life is dying it doesn't matter let me just make the money no at the end of it you will find out that what you left for what you have was not worth it did you hear what I'm saying because for many people we have this idea especially about money now i'm not downplaying all these things i'm teaching you on success already but many people have this idea that if you fail in every aspect of your life but you finally have some money either by a good job a good business at least let you have a house a car and something they just feel you are all right it is a deception of the devil are we together there is bad success unfortunately bad success seems to be more fashionable than good success because of the price and the protocol it takes to attain unto good success it looks too long the process looks too cumbersome i can cheat my way and manipulate my way into good success Many of us probably, there are some of you right now hearing me and listening to me. God sent you here today because you are about to make careless and even foolish decisions. Because of this obsession, you have covenanted with yourself that this year, 2023, especially that God has declared unto us prophetically that it's a year of open doors. I have told you, even a prison has doors. So just because a door is open, you need to find out where you are entering. Hallelujah. Bad success. Our world is full of bad success. People cheat. People kill. People join fraternities. They will tell you, go and bring your mother as a sacrifice. And you say, it doesn't matter. She was going to die anyway. The only thing is that I'm just hurrying up the, the time. Hmm. You see, the thing with Satan eh, is you never know the price of what you're gaining for until you taste of it a bit. So you begin to walk and enjoy. Go and ask people who have been part of cult groups and fraternities. For the first few years, it will look as if there is no demand. Then one day, at the point where your failure can affect you and affect others, the devil now comes and says, just to let you know it was a loan you have been collecting. I'm going to calculate the loan and the interest now you are a big man and everybody knows you are a big man how do i survive the shame so your firstborn not abraham's kind of isaac or this one you are killing your son everything that would desire you leaving the lord every kind of success that would desire you compromising on your relationship with the Lord to attain unto. I am telling you, this is deception. You are only licking poison that was sugar-coated with sugar. It's only a matter of time. It will be like a dart to your heart. Is someone learning? Yes. There are many, many people today it will take God to help them because they have dappled into all kinds of satanic things and that includes preachers there are some of you when you see what god is doing with our lives you admire it so much and someone will tell you look there's a way there's a way we do this there's a way ministry is done there's a way they can wash your eyes there's a way you can prophesy there is a way you can get money for ministry it looks very attractive and marketable after all i suffered you would say and let me tell you the truth don't say it can't happen to me just say God show me mercy because you see the devil is not a fool he will not come to you when you have options he will allow life to press you to a point 
Many of you do not know what the human being can do under desperation. By the time you see that your mother is dying, somebody will now come to you and say, I told you, except you don't love your mother. There's a place I can pay the transport for you. And you say, Mama, you, you, you gave too much for me. It can't be that I'm a failure and I could not help my mother. And you will get into things that you did not imagine. Satan will not come to you when you are just a fresh graduate. You are bubbling with every revelation. He will wait till after five years, no job. No job, no nothing, no husband, no child, no nothing. And then he will, he will use your friend to speak and say, Now for you, if this is your definition of Christianity, I'd rather be an unbeliever. You will say, it doesn't matter, but you enter the room and start crying and say, God, this is unfair. I, I believe that I did everything to be successful. This is what is killing. There are people who cannot come out today. Esteem problems have affected so many people because many years ago, you would see them and think they would be so successful. They carried the semblance of a champion. But years after, it looked like their lives have been reduced to almost nothing. I announce to you, set yourself free by this teaching tonight. There is bad success. When you say you are admiring people, make sure you first define the kind of success you are looking at. Are we together now? Because there is the kind of success where you now see someone a millionaire today traveling around the world, but you check his spiritual life. The fire that was there is no longer there. The love for Jesus that was there is no longer there. There are many people who go abroad and return back unbelievers. People who were prayer warriors, fasting giants. And you ask them, they tell you, forget all that thing. It's just poverty that makes Africa behave this way. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Now Hallelujah. So there is bad success. And I'm giving you the indices to measure it. Number one, that any kind of success pursuit that will demand that your spiritual life dies as the condition for attaining it. And then number two, the kind of result that demands that you hurt and wound other people. You see, let me tell you this. Once upon a time, the Bible talks about David. And David said, oh, that I would drink of the pool of Bethlehem. And the Bible says he is mighty man. These were men he had trained. They said, you've trained us so much. Is this what you want? Consider it. They went and tore down a troop. I mean, they massacred people and went and fetched the water and said, as you have demanded. David said, I cannot drink this again. There are too many lives that went for this. That is a man with conscience. But there are people who do not care. Who dies? Who goes through pain? Which family goes through penury? Let me just make it. Even if it's my brother that dies, let him die. Let me just make it. And some of us, there is a growing desperation because you will come into a circle of people who want to make it in ministry, want to make it in business, want to make it in life, and it does not matter what. I must make it in ministry. I want results. Anyhow, I want a name. I want fame. I'm telling you that there is bad success. Because there are many people you admire today, the clock is only ticking. Are we together? They have compromised on their Christian life and they have the cause of many people are upon their head. There are business people today carrying the cause of too many people. There are families today carrying the cause of too many people. Most of us, this issue of generational causes and the rest, it came because of times of wickedness that were done by forefathers except for the revelation of the finished work of Christ and now administering the blood with understanding. Some of us, our grandfathers were herbalists. By the time they were slaughtering certain women, they made pronouncements. I may die, but your children will pay that price. And he said, still die. Now you came up through that loin. 
and you find out that everything good to work for you that speaking abel though dead yet speaketh. when the saints die their words don't die there are people some of our people that we are part of they massacred missionaries some of you were part of the pain of many people the bible says the curse of the lord is upon the house of the wicked I'm reminding you that there is bad success so that you don't start clamoring for everything we go on the internet today and there are many people marketing different models of success as a young lady there is what they teach you this is the happening thing now if you are not doing it you are not in fashion as a gentleman there are things you must have where is your car where are your designers where are your snapshots around the world you are not making it and there's that pressure and many of you are already deviating from the path that leads to authentic glory into the path of chasing shadows whereas when you started with god the road you were following may look slow but that is the road that will take you there the road of prayer you didn't have money but there's no night that you will not pray for one hour or two hours later on someone told you what is there in prayer what is there in studying the word you will keep reading the bible like a fool till you become a failure now you said this bible thing i'm tired of it let me start using mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success as a preacher they told you there is a way to raise money you can bring in somebody to come and manipulate people and you will get money and after all that manipulation all that you got was 300,000 and God said is this what you replace me for for 300,000 when I can call nations to come and stand with you you have reduced me and put me side by side with 300,000 all right so be it and you find out that that 3,000 will be spent treating a mysterious sickness that the doctors would not be able to diagnose. And yet someone else will be sitting down quietly serving the Lord sincerely and saying, Lord, I know I got up drinking Gary, but I trust you. I will follow your path with dignity and honor. And one day it will look like magic. God will lift that person and you say, I used to know this say bad success say good success good success is the kind that ultimately brings glory to god and then becomes a blessing and an inspiration to your generation let me repeat again that good success is the kind of pursuit that ultimately brings glory to god and then will allow your life and your results to be an, a blessing and an inspiration to a generation that when someone is advising either their child when someone is advising someone somewhere he will say listen follow this model there is a path that has been earmarked for you may your name become a model for someone in the name of jesus may your life become a model that every time someone wants to inspire their child or their staff you are the name that will readily come to mind there are names today we do not call our children even though they are in the bible for instance lucifer for instance judas iscariot are we together you will hardly find people carrying those names and if for any reason they give children the names they just wait patiently until they are adults they quickly go to the court and change it and say god forbid i'm not the one who will carry that kind of course We raise your banner high, we shine your light so bright, we'll sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high, we will shine your light so bright, we'll sing in honor of you. Listen, do you know? Many years ago, in this same Zaria, many years ago, there were people who were doing ministry. Now, I'm, I'm just saying this to inspire you. Those days, ministry was almost like becoming a God. 
there were people who were doing ministry you would think in two years they were going to sweep the whole world they would compromise on anything just to make a name I remember a gentleman then he met me and said apostle with the kind of well not they didn't call me apostle then but with the kind of anointing you have he said you should, you would be a, a bishop in other ministries I just laughed and I appreciated him he said carry your bad success and live my life now let me tell you the truth I'm saying this not to be sarcastic I remember it, I mean, it was programs after programs, things after things. There used to be people with all kinds of things. Young people on campus, but with protocol, with this, with all kinds of things. Ah! I mean, ministry then, hold my Bible, hold my hand, hold my this, hold my that. Over nothing, absolute nothing. It was not their fault. There were models they were following. And unfortunately, I say this with every sense of responsibility, many of those people alongside their models have faded out completely because God is not a fool. Are we together? One day, I went to minister somewhere, quite some years now too. I went to minister somewhere and when I was done ministering, I was invited to the pastor's office just to have some time before I would leave. And the gentleman who ushered me, I just looked at his face. And he was very similar. I said, ah, are you not so, 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 and so? And he said, yes, sir. My heart dropped. I wanted to say, what happened? This gentleman was then a vibrant, look, when they told you, point the people who are going to take the world. Huh? Point the people who may even retire Benny him. You would call these names. And now you are asking, what changed? Now, I'm not saying this so that you laugh at people. It is that it can happen to you if you don't listen. Are we together? You see, the unit of destiny is time. Say time. Shout it again. The unit of destiny is time. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving a part of your life to. And let me tell you the truth. Time does not go backward. It only goes forward. Whether you waste it, whether you spend it, whether you invest it, time goes forward. Many of you can remember when you were 10 years, 15 years, 20. Now look at you, 30, 40, and all of that. Every time I come to Zaria and I look at our wonderful children, I am amazed. Some of these children were dedicated here. You see that? The same way our parents look at us and they say, look at these children. Now they are the ones doing this. That is the deceptive brevity of life. So it says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. Redeeming the time it says, for the days are evil. Some of you are wasting your time joking around, not paying attention to God. Not knowing that it takes time to know God. It takes time to build valuable relationships and a day will come prepared or not the stage of your destiny will open up it is a terrible thing to rehearse on stage the stage is not for rehearsal it's for manifestation now that you are in the wilderness you must learn how to kill the bear you must learn how to kill the lion don't stand and rehearse the day you stand before Goliath Goliath is not a toy is someone learning bad success can you say your spiritual life has been as robust as it was can you say your prayer life fasting loving the Lord passion for the house of God apostle I don't know when it went down because me I need to make money that's my own It's my goal this year congratulations but if it is at the expense of your spiritual life I'm telling you you are already headed towards a dead end because a man can receive nothing. Please listen to me. A man can receive nothing. You see, eh? if God does not help you in life, it will keep looking like you will almost make it. But that's how your years will pass. Bajanji Soroba. Bajanji Kunaba. Mete Mokona, Mete Mokona, 
So before we clap for your result, keep it on the table of destiny and let us check what kind of success. Don't waste your time clapping for just any kind of success. Now you are learning not to be critical but to be intelligent spiritually you will find out that many of the applause you are clapping is a waste of time you are only clapping for shadows clapping for people who have deadened their spiritual lives and do not care i must just make it now we don't condemn we hope that the mercy of god comes but let me tell you the kind of success that would demand that you leave god and then to stop being a blessing to attain it is a bait by Satan from Satan to destroy you. If you're understanding me so far, say amen. amen. Now, for tonight, let me give you two keys. Success is based on laws. Write that down, please. Success is based on laws and principles. Laws and principles. Write it down. Success is based on laws and principles. Job 38 and verse 33. Job was speaking with the Lord. And here's what the Lord asked Job. 38, 33. It says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Let's read it from NIV if we can find it or any other modern translation so that you will understand it. Now let's read. One to read. Do you know the laws of the heavens? It says, Can you set up God's dominion using them? over the earth knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou set the dominion thereof that means do you know why heaven is a place of order and dexterity there are laws satan is not there yet there are laws can you reproduce those laws to your life and to your environment because the assignment is let it be done in earth as it is in heaven are we together you want to see the glory of God? There are patterns you must keep. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Write that scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. The glory of the Lord does not just appear in the various aspects of our lives until there are patterns to keep. You may have heard me teach it, but it bears repeating that the glory of God, listen carefully, the glory of God comes as an attestation that his patterns have been followed. The glory of the Lord comes upon a life as an attestation that his patterns have been followed. When you compromise on divine patterns, there is no guarantee to see in the glory. Are we together? I'm going to give you two kingdom principles that control good success. There are many. But let's deal with two tonight. And in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you that while you are listening, allow the Holy Spirit to keep working on your mind. Don't look at your condition. Don't look at Zaria. He told Abraham, I was sharing with the leaders this morning, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. Not from where you are going. You can start lifting your eyes from where you are, from that village, from that room, from that low estate. Lift up your eyes. Two principles... I have learned from scripture I have learned from the power of mentorship and by the privilege of God's grace now from experience that control good success number one is called the God first principle please write it the God dash first principle this is the first principle I want to teach you tonight the God first principle The God first principle. Please look up. 
when you read Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 this was a revelation that God gave me one time during study the Spirit of God took me to that scripture and said read the first sentence just the first sentence and it reads in the beginning God read the first four words one to go one more time read like a believer one more time just leave whatever he created in the beginning God this is the formula that controls an unbeatable dimension of success that in the beginning of anything whoever you honor from the beginning defines the possibilities in that life or in that destiny in the beginning God not in the beginning skill not in the beginning friends not in the beginning family in the beginning of your life the beginning of your study the beginning of your health the beginning of your destiny don't just say god is in my life what is his position god's position matters not just his presence because he can be there alongside a baggage of many other things i can come to your house and while I'm in your house, there are six of us. One can be outside. The other can be in your living room. And then another can be in your bedroom, the inner chamber. We are all in your house. But the value you have placed on us is not the same. There are many people, God is around their lives, but not at the epicenter of their lives. The God first principle. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you know sometimes... I feel I almost feel frustrated when I begin to teach these things because there is such an urge to share testimonies to inspire you but unfortunately we live in a world right now that always looks at things upside down that when you share testimonies they are they are mistaken for pride but let me just tell you this only a fool would tell you making God a priority does not lead to your elevation that would be a big mistake go and read your bible and see men who make god their priority and for a while they acted and looked like fools except that at the end of their lives all that we see and we saw was the beauty and glory of heaven the god first principle demands that god becomes alpha before he becomes omega he cannot be omega over what he did not become alpha on he is alpha omega if he did not begin it there is no guarantee that he's going to sponsor it are we learning second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 let's read verse 3 down to 5 the bible says 16 years old was uzziah when he began to reign and he reigned 50 and two years in jerusalem the bible says his mother's name was also jacolia of jerusalem verse 4 it says and he did that which was right in the sight of the lord according to all that his father amaziah did verse 25 let's read it together in concert ready one to read and he sought god in the days of zechariah who had understanding in the visions of god uh-huh and as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper who makes men prosper yes sir you got it right it's an answer you must never change for the rest of your life men prosper because they are marvelously helped by god I will lift up my eyes to the hills, he says. From whence cometh my help? It's a question. He says, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker. I like that definition. He calls God the maker. It is not only the heavens and the earth he makes. He can make men. Bring your destiny as battered and scattered as it is. Hand it over to the maker that what your father could not do, what your mother could not do, are we together now? What your tribal affiliation may not afford you. You hand over that destiny. I know you can't speak English very well. I know you may not have the kind of pedigree that is welcoming. But you hand over like the woman with the alabaster box. 
hand it over to the maker and watch what he does he is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty battle Amen. You are the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty battle. Amen. A day will come, you will travel to your home and pass roads you used to know before except that the only thing that will accompany you is the tears from your eyes i remember this house you will say i remember this place and you will say how great thou art the faithfulness of god over your life let the mockers mock while you love him let those who laugh at you laugh while you mock him let other people say it's god you are going to eat it's god that will give you a husband they are not wrong you just continue where god will carry people that look like nations and bring to your life Listen, this is not a sermon, no. This is, this is a charge by the Spirit. Serving God pays. You can earn a living loving Jesus. The same way they say somebody is this, what do you do? And you say loving Jesus. Our world today will laugh at you and say shame on you. What a foolish person. Preachers have indoctrinated you. Watch the person who spoke after 10 years. The brothers of, Jesus, of, of Joseph taught his passion, the dreams that he was having. They were angry and they tried to throw him into the well. But they did not know the kind of hand and influence that was backing him. For some of you, God sent you to Zaria here. I was teaching our precious people that koinonia Zaria is different from every other expression of koinonia across the globe because this place is more than an apostolic center. It's a training ground. This is, this is it's like military, the school of infantry. This is where those who are world changers are identified and made. Some of you are seated quietly, yet that prophet is still there seated quietly apostle i come from a family somewhere in plateau or southern kaduna we do not even have there is don't worry allow the maker make you don't allow fools that don't know where they are going deceive you people who are not going anywhere they don't have any idea about their life you see the fallen man is arrogant even at the height of ignorance are we together yes if you had seen many of us many decades before now we will not look like it today the foolishness of loving Jesus Lord my life may not be much but if you ever find value in it here I present it as a trophy and God says it was mine all the way I gave you you have the power to use it without me now you hand it over to me he said but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that listen which is committed to him he only keeps what is committed to him not what you hold and say bless hand it over it belongs to you Lord, I have no idea about what my life should become. If I'm to use the parameters of my success right now, I may not amount to much. Maybe my father is no more alive. Maybe my mother is not alive. Maybe what I studied or I'm studying is not even something from our world today, from a value standpoint. It may not be something that guarantees anything. Hand it over. God is speaking to someone. Tonight is a handover service. Don't try to live your life and run it by your rules. You are already messing it up. Carry what is left with humility and bring it to him. And say, this is how my father messed up his life. When he was 25, he thought he was in control of things. And 25 years, the man who sat at Bethesda, he was so close to the pool, yet for 38 years he could not be healed. You can be so close to destiny helpers. You can be so close to opportunities, but there is no guarantee that God, if God does not help you, you will keep looking at greatness like this till you grow old. You will never step into it. It's terrible to see a thing. You already have a picture, but to hold it, you will see that as close as you are, until the hand of Elohim stretches for you, you will never hold it. You know how they bait horses? They put straw in front of them 
or some grain uh, and then they tie it they will never be able to to catch it so their movement is not because they want to move in their minds they hope that they are moving towards it that is the deception of trying to be great without god you will be close next week give me your cv i forgot uh -uh. i used to be your father's classmate and you start dancing finally it is done without god you are joking that man will become a director there and even after 10 years he will leave and unbelievers who meandered into a crusade ground and say i don't believe in jesus but let me receive this prophecy will go and move forward and you find out that you remain there except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it i'm speaking to someone except the lord watches over a city my bible says the watchmen watch it but in vain it says it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow only god can give his beloved sleep let me tell you something during covid we didn't have service here remember during covid from february it was till december that a service was held i remember respectfully speaking a few loving sincere and very beautiful hearted men of god who called me and said apostle what you are doing is suicidal you don't do that in ministry that from uh, from february you don't have any service no point of contact with your people by the time you call a meeting again you will come and meet empty chairs I said I respect you and I respect whoever taught you but there is something I know about God you have no idea of my covenant with God you have no idea of what he told me in the wilderness mm. I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me. Here's the part of the song I love. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have overcome no matter your situation. I have, I have, I have overcome. I have overcome. Hear me. Whoever told you God cannot prosper you. This money thing that is making you leave the Lord, you need to pipe, pipe low with it and come back to God and say, my pursuit for money. You may have done it sincerely. Lord, I return to you. Help me and show me mercy. You are the only one who can open the eyes of a man to see an oasis in the desert. If you do not open the eyes of men, they will not see. Apostle, my own is that I need money for ministry. It is the God of heaven who made the friends of Job who left him to return back. In Job 42 and verse 10, he was dejected and left there as though he did not have God. He lost everything in his life. The only person, humanly speaking, who was with him was his wife. And I'm sure she was tired. She said, will you not cause God and die? I can't leave you because I'm your wife, but help me by dying. So that at least I can have a life with my remaining days. And Job said, all the days of my appointed time, he says, I will wait. Waiting is the hardest thing for a believer to do. Listen to my teaching. When God is silent, I've told you that the silence of God is a language. You need to know what God is saying when he's not speaking. For someone, when God is silent, he means keep pressing. You are making the right decision. Don't change your mind. Keep pressing keep praying keep serving you are serving in the house of god and they look at you they'll say you keep getting old no man will come and marry you the same way it happened to your mother and you will feel stupid 
oh you cannot do this you, you you keep doing that you will be poor forever and you sit down and feel stupid and you think of your innocent mother and your siblings and where do i start from the god first principle for as long as he sought the lord the bible says god made him to prosper in john chapter 15 let's read from verse 1 to 3 i like this he says i am the vine john 15 1 3 i am the true vine in fact it says he says and my father is the husbandman follow carefully verse 2 every branch in me that beareth not fruit i take away and every branch that beareth fruit he purged that it may bring forth fruit verse 3 it says now ye are clean through the word which i have spoken unto you let's even continue the reading verse 4. it says abide in me i like this it's called the law of abiding abide in me don't just visit me abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself how many of you have seen a leaf with mango or orange on it just a leaf dangling in the air you will know that that is witchcraft trying to attack you because it does not happen that way is that true behind every when you see fruits all around there is a tree connected to the root the root the vine the branches then the leaves and the fruit so jesus is saying here that the same way a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine it says no more can ye except you abide in me never forget verse 5 for as long as you live let's read together it says i am the vine ye are the branches he that abided in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit the last verse for without me ye can do nothing For without me ye can do nothing the god first principle in the beginning god father i'm about to start this business and even though i think i know what i'm doing but i come to you you are the wisdom of god spirit of the living god you were sent to help me except you help me there is no guarantee that i will prosper oh someone said you will give me a job lord thank you because you use men but it comes through men not from men it comes from god so if god has not released anything any man who claims to want to give you anything is only causing trouble for you and god says because you have trusted me he says they that trust in the lord shall be as mount zion that abided forever and is not shaken let me tell you the truth this ministry that you see there is nothing necessarily special in us our sufficiencies of God the one we have chosen to be head over this ministry many of you come from homes where if you remember there was a placard that used to be in our homes Christ is the head of this home remember the unseen guest at every meal the silent listener to every conversation there was a placard that used to rain like that as children they, they hung it there so that if you ever forget, you will remember that the head of this home is not the father. The head of this home is Christ. That every home must be a triangle. Christ being the upper part, then the father and the mother. If it is ever a straight line, a straight line cannot spread itself around. It is the presence of Christ. And the more they rise towards christ the more you see that shape beautifully represented christ is the head of this home the unseen guest at every meal the silent listener to every conversation it is my prayer ladies and gentlemen as you listen to me that you will make a determination with your life tonight that this mundane pursuit of trying to live my life without Christ hear me dear Peter you may have heard me say it there are times you can go to the sea the sea is the correct place if you want to catch fish there are times you can have the net the net is the correct tool if you want to catch fish there are times you can have the skill and even the experience and yet strangely you will still not catch fish everything right education right 
connection right recommendations right and mysteriously your life will still remain like that that is where God comes the size of God cannot be filled with it cannot be replaced with anything anything forever as long as I live and as long as this ministry lives the head of this ministry remains Jesus Christ the wisdom behind everything that you see it was right here we started with the foolishness and the simplicity of following him and look what he's doing now and this is only a step out of the cave compared to the things that he's doing for the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light I'm saying this because someone seated here a few years from now you will return back to this place and stand on this podium with tears in your eyes you say I remember I came in as that villager from somewhere and while people were laughing at me I heard a preacher say this and I chose to listen at that point you'll be songs of praise that will just fill your heart I usually use this story to share with our Abuja family that many years ago when when I'll be traveling to Abuja when I got to the park they would stop me somewhere and then when I come out of the car there was one small restaurant connected to a filling station then now it's destroyed that was the restaurant that was like my joint where I'll go to eat because the food was delicious and it was cheap I was not ready to go and embarrass myself anywhere and it was messy that made me find that place I don't know what kind of grace made that woman to sell such delicious meal at such a cheap price and I remember I would eat and then just get up stretch myself and then begin my activities so one time I think it was last year we we're graduating our school of ministry students and I needed to have a quick snapshot with them and so they were passing me there and when I passed I looked at that place now it was demolished but I still remember the bank that was in front I sat down and I nodded my head I said this God this God I will worship him forever love him forever because this God is too good as I was passing today after our leaders meeting I passed and I remember one place where we used to buy corn I used to tease the woman and call her little daughter my wife only I'm sure maybe who knows maybe the girl is even married now Are we together happily the woman would sit down I had various joints for corn various you know Jesus ate corn so if you love Jesus you can test it with your passion for corn hallelujah various places I smiled if I had seen her there I would have probably stopped and said look give me corn don't shout any just pass me the corn and let me be on my way don't run away from your today you will miss what you are rushing listen to what I'm telling you don't be in a hurry don't hate your today so much you want to run out of it move with gallancy because what looks like a, a symbol of shame today will become your scar of honor when we get to heaven it's not crowns that we use to know who Jesus is because even the elders have crowns all you need to do is to tell everybody to lift their hands the one who has the scar is the Christ he's the only one who has that kind of scar so what you are ashamed of today will become your badge of honor tomorrow are we together now don't rush life there is no point living a fake life trying to make it look like I have arrived no the Word of God has already secured you move with honor and gallancy and you will step in there someone say the God first principle let me give you the second one and then we'll pray are you learning now and thou shalt make your ways prosperous and thou shalt have 
good success the second principle is called the law of mental transformation please write it down there are many of these laws but i'll just give us two for this night and then we'll pray the second law that is responsible for an excelling life is the law of mental transformation goodness i wish i had time to deal with this subject it never tires me teaching on it because of the power and the excellency of this topic mental transformation please look up your mind is a miracle that god gave you that is connected to your success and connected to your destiny again to balance it up there are many believers that are not open towards mental transformation haven't exalted the issue of spirituality most people are bankrupt mentally and when i talk about mental transformation it is just is beyond secular enlightenment you can be knowledgeable in a field but not knowledgeable holistically as touching the laws of life there are many intelligent people who are learned but when it comes to understanding the cosmos they do not have that understanding are we together mental transformation in second corinthians chapter 10 i believe from verse 4 please give it to us second corinthians chapter 10 here's what it says for the weapons of our warfare it says are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds then it says casting down <clears throat> imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ when it has to do with your success and your destiny the following truths stand right please the quality of a man's life is tied to his mindset the quality of a man's life the quality of a man's life is tied to his mindset mindsets define our limits and our possibilities in life i wrote here mindsets define our limits and they define our possibilities in life this is very true and this is very powerful the bible says to guard your heart interchange for mind with all diligence it says for out of it from out of it proceeds the issues of life the quality of your life and my life depends on your mindset listen i don't want to start boring you with all the discussions we've done quite some extensive discussions as touching mindsets here but then it's important to just maybe by way of a recap remind you that a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern if you're writing you may want to write please that a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern a sustained thinking pattern a mindset is an ideology a mindset is a viewpoint like we used to do in fine arts they taught something called perspective now if someone were outside and you were asked to draw this entire not just the auditorium but just draw this whole perspective those at overflow three may not be captured in his representation because of the limitation of his view this is what mindset is mindset is the lens and the vista from which you view life this is very important your mindset is the lens it is the vista from which you view life your perceptions hallelujah and i did teach you when we did discussions on mindsets that a stronghold is a faulty mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim thinking that way let me repeat myself for emphasis that a stronghold is a faulty thinking pattern that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim thinking 
that way. Hallelujah. Are we together? According to the Bible and of course the intelligence of veterans who have studied subjects relating to this, they teach us that there are essentially about five ways that mindsets are formed. Let me run it through just for the sake of those who would be encountering this knowledge for the first time. Number one, the first way mindsets are formed are through our cultural experiences. You may want to write that as fast as you can. Our cultural experiences. In social studies, we define culture as the way of life of a people. Are we together now? So chances are excellent that if you grew, if you grew up sociologically speaking, seeing people behave in a certain way, seeing people respond to life in a certain way, that becomes the natural way that you respond to life. Hallelujah. Culture. Cultural influences. I will always observe that there are positive sides to culture. Sides that emphasize morality, excellence, respect, empathy, and all these kinds of things. But there are also negative, satanic aspects of culture that if you do not edit out of your life, they will stop you from attaining a glorious destiny. Are we together now? One of the reasons why Zechariah became dumb was because he wanted to fight a new order that God was bringing. When he gave him a word and that it was going to be John, he shut his mouth so that he would not use his mouth, which is a reflection of his mindset, to destroy something precious that God was doing. Compromising on John's destiny would eventually affect the arrival of Jesus. Are we together? So he shut his mouth until he agreed in writing that even though no one had been called that name through the family line that this was truly what god was doing and his mouth opened culture is very important but there are many people today who are failures thanks to culture are we together there are many aspects of culture especially within our african context that endorses mediocrity endorses all kinds of things we find solace there is a a, a very a very strong consolation that a lot of people receive especially and respectfully so we who have come from the middle belt because of the evangelical context right our emphasis has always been on evangelism soul winning and then our eventual transition to heaven and that is true and profitable except that the gospel when it came from those who it came from thanks to them they did not communicate the whole counsel of god and so aspects that make for an excelling life responsibility and other dimensions were not captured so many people were well-intentioned loving god but they became irresponsible fathers irresponsible to society are we together and then you go to other regions and the emphasis is on success and making it regardless your stand with god culture if not managed can be the foundation of a man's destruction number two very quickly our past experiences our past experiences are very important they can mold our mindsets there are some of us who have failed so many times that subjects that talk about favor is far from your life because in your mind it is wrong to ever attain anything early and let me tell you this is still a spirit that we have to trust God to take away from Africa by the time you see a young man in his 20s suddenly excelling even with the dignity of kingdom integrity people begin to frown and say no it should not be that way you, in other words, you are too young to be attaining this kind of result. Are we together? You go to nations like China and you see little children with witty inventions. I mean, taking over the world, redefining civilizations because their culture does not seem to put anything on age. Your creativity and your value is what gives you access. Doesn't matter whether you're a baby. And of course, there are other negative aspects. There, there is a heritage we have in Africa and around respect and the rest, like I said earlier on, that must be preserved. 
but with respect to success the average person in africa and nigeria who wants to rise your first assignment is to break through the limiting beliefs and sometimes you may not even have the energy to continue if you do survive hallelujah our past experiences number three our family backgrounds our family backgrounds the kind of family that you come from can affect your overall perception about god respectfully speaking if you come from a family where your father was not attentive to spiritual things you never saw your family observing devotions they were careless and less as fair as far as the things of god is concerned is the same thing you will reproduce as a father except god shows you mercy are we together now yes listen every national problem was first a regional problem that was not solved every regional problem was first a community problem that was not solved and every community problem was a family problem that was not solved the unit of all troubles is family the unit of all excellence is still family are we together there are people today no matter how perverted they become there was a, a healthy godly foundation there is a way they cannot deviate beyond a certain point the foundation of godliness is too strong their conscience will not allow them go that far are we together yes if you come from a family where you are the first serious christian out of 17 people chances are excellent that if god does not help you by bringing other godly people to stand you may not last because even in your backsliding state you'll still be better than everybody who is there family background can i give us two more your association your association is a very very serious molder of your mindset your association there are many of us who were good and responsible people until certain relationships were introduced in your life and listen when it has to do with the influence of association there is no age limit there are people who did well in their lives respectfully speaking even down to adulthood but just when they were about culminating their lives the devil introduced satanic demonic relationships into their lives that just destroyed them our world is full of such people are we together now yes oh the woman was doing well loving the lord except that she now traveled abroad or traveled somewhere and met a group of atheists and now you do not even know whether she's on fire again that's why the Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. The Bible says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and that on that law doth he meditate day and night, that he will be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. And the Bible says, Whose leaf does not wither, but whatsoever he doeth prospers. There you find prosperity again. Are we together you must be able to edit your association there's no such thing like we're born from the same village if they if if your association and your friends do not hold your values it's time to respectfully summon the courage to start editing people love is a command association is not are we together when it was time for god to use abraham mightily he told him come out of your father's house out of every tribe kindred do you know why because sometimes your own people love you too much to allow you to be great they know the risk that you are taking by being great and they can love you too much to allow you rise now watch this when it has to do with the mind ladies and gentlemen please hear me I have taught it several times while we're in Zaria here that I don't care what changes in your physical environment if your mindset does not change if you try to change anything from the exterior please look up you are only wasting your time are we together imagine with me a person who stands in front of a mirror your dressing mirror now 
and if you see a thread on your head do you put your hand in the mirror to remove it what do you do you remove it here and the guy in the mirror also does the same thing it will be foolish to try to put your hand through the mirror to remove the thread so if you find something wrong your physical environment will always be a messless reflection of your mindset and your ideologies apostle i don't know why i don't nobody seems to like me everybody runs away from me when the problem is everybody the problem is you everybody cannot be wrong any everybody cannot be a devil everybody cannot be a fool the problem is you psychologists teach us that you attract to your life the physical equivalent of your most dominant thoughts the resultant effect of your mindset is what you will attract the physical environment why am i attracting wicked and devilish and negative people it may be that there is a mental construct you have of sarcasm of laughing at people rejoicing over the pain of others and there is an energy let me tell you the truth there is an energy that your mindset releases that can attract all kinds of negative people to your life the bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly is that true yes it says a merry heart do it good like medicine but it says a companion of fools shall be destroyed i told you again about association that if there are five wise people in your life you did not count well there are actually six if there are five foolish people in your life you also did not count well there are actually six because you will always be a reflection of your association are we together yes now here is the tragedy in our world we're about to pray the tragedy in our world is that we are obsessed with trying to change the physical things around us so let me wear a nice cloth wear a nice shoe probably drive a nice car are we together and have a physical expression of success whereas my mind is still the old me can i tell you no matter what you try to change physically this is one of the ironclad rules when it has to do with good success. You can move from one room into a great house. If your mindset is still in one room, that house will bring you back. I assure you, it is a law. Nothing in your life changes until you change. Friends can change, your result will still be the same. Geography can change, your result will still be the same. Have you seen people who traveled abroad and spent decades there only to return back still looking like their past? Because your exterior is not what changes you. Are we together? So the Bible says it this way. It said, let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus did not just excel for nothing. There was a mental construct. There was a thinking. Are we together? Now gentlemen two of you please come very quickly let me use you now watch this very carefully i like to teach graphically just stand here facing me i'm glad one is wearing white just stand turn around facing me now watch this i want you to tell me which of these two you will most likely help okay so this gentleman you're a respectful person when you see me you will bow and greet and act very wisely thank god you are bigger than him this guy is helping me act my drama very well are we together when you see me just push me and pass me and two of you are looking for help are we together by push don't worry it's not any there's there's no cause that is coming i didn't say push me and follow me just uh, okay just move like you didn't see me before you push me down now are we together now watch this these are two gentlemen let's even assume they were born on the same day in fact call them twins this guy for whatever reason either because of his submission to a man of god who has cultured his understanding and his mindset are we together and this guy let's assume he went to one school somewhere and then eventually this is what he has become now are we together now this these guys are looking for favor they are trusting god for breakthrough in fact call both of them christians let's assume they are saved now this guy comes to me come please 
and you see from his mindset he has learned the value of respect he's learned the value of honor this guy may not even know much but just for practicing honor he sees an elderly person is greeting the person you don't just walk and say what is there is he feeding me is he my father you have been taught that life works on the principle of seed time and harvest so the person does not have to be your biological father you may push the man because baba is old and he looks at you and says may your children do the same for you you will say it does not matter until your firstborn shows you and then your secondborn adds to it then your thirdborn adds to it and then the lord will remind you one day that as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest now you will wonder why this guy seems to be well cultured the fact that he already has as a mindset the law of seed time and harvest makes him know that laws are vicious warriors laws fight more than men are we together so he comes to me how are you fine and he's greeting me and you see because of that from his mindset he's acting out his mindset i will most likely be endeared to him oh what are you doing now um well sir i'm trusting god for a job somewhere oh really you don't have a job where is your dad now oh sadly he's passed on now you see it is easy for the holy spirit to drive me to help this man because already his mental preparation is already supporting what he wants i will most likely tell him okay come and see me tomorrow now our man come and pass me i used to be friends with his father and now he has passed me like this in this example and you can see he's now moving and he does not care then let's imagine that where he's going to i am the ceo now you open the door and see me seated and i stand up i say my friend are you not the one who passed me there yes and he's doing all these funny things we do in our generation pride for nothing so what are you looking for a job i say it's all right um, you'll hear from us you can go and now we we'll end up saying no the devil and this guy will go home and he's praying and saying lord why is it that all my friends run away from me am i that bad no this is what is wrong listen another example stand facing me let's assume that this guy i will use one more example eh? and then i'll give you a big hug don't worry you're a nice person watch this let's assume that this guy say is an arm robber and let's hey, yes, you are not the one i'm talking about let's assume this one is a pastor are we together watch this so this guy carries a gun watch this please and is jumping from house to house killing people destroying all kinds of things sometimes killing somebody just for fifty thousand, because in his mind fifty thousand is greater than that life that has died are we together now watch this whereas this one is a pastor loving people healing the brokenhearted if two of them drop dead here you see you don't call this a pastor dead body you don't call this an ambrobber dead body you call both of them dead bodies so who was really the pastor the mindset not the body who was really the ambrobber the mindset not the dead body now let's assume this our man now comes for koinonia and suddenly the fire of god falls upon him and after two years now he becomes a pastor too are we together now you see the same person who would have beat the living daylight out of you now he loves you respectful he's greeting you what change not his body what change you spent six years in school as a doctor did they change your body what did they change listen listen if you touch your pocket and it's empty don't blame your pocket don't even blame your hand they are all report cards they are telling you something is wrong with your mind are we together now now i can take let me use money for example because people seem to understand this is one thousand naira watch this if i give this gentleman one thousand naira and his mindset has not been trained to receive this his mindset will compel him to act in ways that must make this money leave him have you seen people like that it's a waste to give them anything physical the mindset there are people who may not even have money but you give him hundred thousand you know what he will do he will get a car to kaduna and go to a boutique 
and buy a suit the hundred thousand is what he has home and abroad he will buy a suit ninety thousand and snap with it and that's it and while he enters the bus coming back they will steal it listen listen are we together for somebody who may just start working and God just opens a door the uncle says well let me just give you one million and the guy says I've suffered he may go and collect a loan of five million and buy a car of 4.5 and then while he's driving the first person the car will hit is the convoy of a governor they will now say come out and sit on the ground first before you will sell this car and fix this one alas master for it was borrowed why was he the only one who borrowed it he was not the only one cutting the tree what did the rest use mindset some of you right now you are wearing your future now because your mindset has taught you that except you look like that and unfortunately respectfully so there are many kinds of books and programs that keep culturing people you know all can fake it till you make it oh, these things are not in the Bible you would destroy your life there are people with what God is doing in your life right now if you had a healthy mindset the blessing of God is enough at this level for you mama may not have much but she's sending 50,000 you may not have a, a very may, may not be a good job but at least 50 60 thousand is coming every week what is that one if you cannot manage 50 thousand you cannot manage 500 thousand you cannot manage 5 million you cannot manage 50 million god loves you too much to give you that kind of blessing when you have no he say he that is faithful in little are we together now someone else will be living off 10 thousand but you look at that person and you would think the person is physically a multi-millionaire because of priorities, decorum. You will never come to that person's house and lack a good food. You will not see the person roaming around restaurants with 10,000. They will go and honorably buy gari, buy rice and learn how to cook. The day you have money, you can, you can, do you know I used to cook before? <laughs> I can't even remember. You put me with a pot, now I will pray. And cut everything you have to first promise that you must eat whatever at the end of the meal hallelujah so watch this this guy has a disposition that is very friendly every time people come to you how are you when people have a problem you are very attentive to them listen oh are you okay are you fine and you find out that everybody wants to come around him why because there is a mental disposition that is very friendly are we together but someone else will come with a very pungent mindset the lifespan of friendship in your life is two weeks you must say something that will backfire eventually the friend comes and after laughing once they close the door you will laugh as they look at this person's shoe how this shoe is as if it's, it's as if it's 30 naira and you, you 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 act like that and god is watching and men too are watching now the day a gentleman wants to marry you and he comes to seek counsel and he says sir there's somebody i'm looking at the friend will say who say no god and me we love you too much your your destiny is colorful and is bright you will never never i will not allow this kind of thing and you are wondering why are doors closed for me is someone learning now this is where it is some of you are angry the moment you get angry the only person who will calm you down is the holy spirit you can literally carry bottle and hurt another person we are all like that in our family you either change or you will suffer the bitter pill of violating kingdom laws is someone learning there is nobody who is like that the presence of the holy spirit in our life should change us there are some of you who are very sarcastic if someone looks at you and say you are looking beautiful you say i know you you are always insulting if you don't feel good about yourself the key is to listen to teachings that build you but someone may be well intentioned maybe a very sincere gesture but you are interpreting it from the lens do you know there are people who come to church and you saw you see somebody looking your direction and smiling you know what the person is thinking about how will i pay my rent and you say the person is laughing at you the person has enough problem he's just he just so happens you know you can be looking here but you are not here 
So this is how the landlord will throw me out. And you now sit down and say, you see how they are looking at me? Let me tell you the truth. People love you, but they love themselves too. Don't make a mistake of flattering yourself that everybody is dedicating their time to just insult you. People have enough trouble in their own lives. Are we together? There are some of you, you can go with five friends. You will buy donut up of puff for 300 naira. Your friends are watching you. You will eat everything there and squeeze the leather and throw it in their presence and act like you didn't do anything. You know that message apostle preached <laughs> and they are watching you and then you find out you will never have friends again in your life is someone learning say in the name of jesus please shout it say in the name of jesus i receive grace to contend for mental transformation listen every person you see today that looks admirable i submit to you they did not come like that by default in Adam, all of us came by the fallen nature. It's just that other people sat down and started making an intentional work on their lives. Are we together? Mindsets. I saw several mindsets in me growing up and even in ministry. And I said, no, no, no. I have to work on this mindset. Some of them are cultural. Some of them came from all kinds of backgrounds. It's your assignment to work with the word of God. I always recall a very interesting story years ago we went to hire instruments for a crusade and when we went to hire instruments it now led us to go to a church one Pentecostal church and the man was preaching about the wealth of Solomon you know coming from our Orthodox background so what is this guy saying like this you mean in a whole service you are just jumping and saying you'll be an, another Solomon hmm. well we're begging for sound so we had to behave ourselves we sat down after the grace we now walked up to the man and said, we're young people, we have a crusade and we're begging for sound. This man lambasted us and used any kind of evil word you can think about. I was just watching that guy who a few minutes ago was preaching about Solomon's wealth. And this man now is now insulting innocent children. We didn't hold a gun, we didn't hold anything. We came sincerely with our envelope with a letter to beg for sound. You would have just said, go away. If I meet that man today, I will love him. I'll say, may God bless you. And how are you doing now? If that guy did not change, I didn't need to prophesy about his life. I can tell you what the result will be. That person could be you. You are driving everybody in your life today because of the little privilege you have. A day will come, everybody you are driving. You see, as you are praying in tongues, they are praying too. Even with the torn trousers, they are praying too. Even with the 200 naira shoe, they are praying to. Don't downplay what the Spirit of God can do in the life of a man. Are we together now? Your assignment, ladies and gentlemen, is to focus on investing on your mind. One day, Gobeta is a sociological wise saying. It does not carry any power. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. Are you learning? As a preacher, as an individual there are many mindsets that you need to have one of them the chiefest let me give you two can I give you two mindsets to incul inculcate this night number one the mindset of honor number two the mindset of gratitude write this down with these two mindsets alone I, I guarantee you by the integrity of scripture you will be more superior than many people the mindset of honor and the mindset of gratitude you can use these two mindsets to recreate your world i don't care what you currently meet it as write it down number one the mindset of honor get my teaching the law of honor honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of individuals for their distinctive difference and the value that they bring when I came up here, I took out time to honor our parents, leaving their schedules and coming here to honor Cornell. This is the CEO of, of the whole of Basawa to honor all of these people. Now, you come and touch me. It's both God and them that will deal with you. God is doing his own from heaven. You know how the flood of Noah, heaven gave his reign. The earth too added his own, whoever was in the middle. Are we together now? Honor. Many of you, God has allowed great people to pass by you. 
but simply because you do not have a mindset of honor you take people for granted you will go to the office of a man that you should never have gotten there except by the privilege of a relationship and as soon as you get there you just sit down what do you want what do you have you call it confidence and they are watching you cctv is speaking you and as you are leaving they say let this guy never come around this secretariat again Apostle, why is it that when good things are about to happen, they go away? Demons only take advantage of the mindset that is there and they build a stronghold around it. So you keep traveling from place to place and recycling the same mistake. Please listen. I'm, this is a deliverance service. God is showing someone the reason why doors never seem to open. Are we together? Try this. Look for the top five people who have contributed immensely in your life send them a text message and say thank you start with your parents mommy just to say thank you apostle you don't know my mother after insulting me and calling me a witch don't worry she was just angry are you really a witch who gave birth to the witch then don't worry your mother is not a witch you are not a witch does that is the purpose of maturity you should know that they were just mismanaging their anger but you send a text somebody helped you to pay your um, maybe school fees or something don't just send text when you are now looking for help Calvary greetings and then two minutes later another text is coming sir just to let you know you know that the way this my life is I'm the firstborn that's not the issue are we together say amen, amen. practice honor and practice gratitude and watch just with these two mindsets Watch what happens to you. Honor to God, honor to men. I'm giving it to you as an assignment. This night, send a text to somebody. And don't send this kind of text message that looks like an insult. I was told to send you a text by apostle. Thanks. Is that gratitude? Is that honor? Some of you are like that. You can send 30 text messages begging. And then the person now gives you money and after three hours, you just say thanks. You don't even spell it well. Thanks. Does that sound like gratitude? You see, the principle of the intention of gratitude is to make the giver perceive that you are grateful. It is your assignment to use every means, godly means within your power. Let me tell you the truth. You never will need to ask anything twice if you give thanks for the first one. Are we together? There are people who can be so, they, they can be so grateful, you feel indebted to them. Even when you forget them, God will remind you. Hallelujah. One day, I shared something for some little children, and after they had gone, I was busy doing something, and then one of them, one tiny girl just ran and came, and I just saw somebody hug me from behind. And I just turned, I said, who is this? And she asked me to bring my ears down. She said she was telling me thank you again. Ah, I wanted to see her parents first. Who would have trained this kind of girl? Eventually, I told them to get the parents and I said, whatever it would take for this girl to rise to be great, me, I'll handle it. Now, watch this. I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to tell you that a child just scheduled a season. It doesn't matter whether the parents are interested in being prosperous or not. The child has bailed herself out. Are you seeing that now? How many people have passed your life who you can edge the memory of your honor to them and compel them to attend to your destiny? Mindsets. Is someone learning? How many times do you go to the Lord and say thank you? Father, thank you. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are frowning the root of David and as if you are just entering his gates with thanksgiving. And now that you are inside the gates, God, come out. Oh, I'm in your gates now. I've been warning you this and that and that whereas there's somebody in the hospital stage 2 cancer and the person says thank you Lord that I'm even alive I'm not asking you for anything I'm alive and God says you do not know the value of life and health you are here harassing me and saying you are eating only rice every day you need something more whereas someone is about dying and saying Lord thank you that you are keeping me alive someone say thank you Jesus one more time say thank you Jesus honor and gratitude I thought I think it was in Abuja and let me teach you if you've not gotten it 
if you are in any kind of relationship and you don't have value your contribution should be gratitude write it down i teach you a powerful secret if there is any kind of relationship you are part of if you do not have what to offer in terms of value let your offering be gratitude perpetual gratitude and you have made an eternal contribution to that relationship hallelujah thank you thank you daddy i just want to say thank you thank you for my school fees thank you for everything uh -uh. what for i stopped paying your school fees 15 years ago i just took out time to reflect on your kindness they may just laugh somebody who is your employer i just came to say thank you sir whereas other people are insulting him this man is a wizard his wife is a witch wicked man he's the only one eating the money while we are working but he's the boss and it is his company and someone just walks up to say sir i just held this little bottle of wine may not be much but just to sincerely appreciate you in my time here i have learned and i'm committed to improvement usually they will act like he did not enter them you just go when they are looking for those to promote you will see the man fighting as if they charm him to retain you and to see that you rise god loves everybody but he does not trust everybody Zaria, please hear me. It is not the lack of money. It is not the economic situation. It is something about your mindset. I have taught you that any door that opened before and now is closed, it is dishonor that has closed it. Never trivialize people's value. Are we together now? Yes. When you see elderly people, respect them and greet them and honor them. When you see great people, don't pretend greatness. Don't push them away and say, after all, they are just lucky. That is the mindset of a defeated person already. Are we together? As I am today, there are people that are eternally worthy of my respect and my, my honor. I will never see them and not honor them. When I came in here and I saw our father, I got up and we were laughing and I was greeting him. Apostle would not turn me into a stupid person. I want to live long, I want to live far, and life is a product of seed time and harvest. Are we together? There are some of you after the grace, they say, turn to somebody and just say, hello, for where? I'm on my way going home. And you find out that you are going home alone. Everything you are doing it alone. Nobody cares about you. Whether you are present or absent, you see, if your presence, if your absence is not missed, it means that your presence is not adding anything. Whether you come for koinonia or not, nobody knows. doesn't matter. And you've been coming for, they'll say, how many years have you been? Me? I'm six years old in koinonia. And nobody knows you. Are you in any department? I don't join departments. I just come and receive and I'm on my way going. Are you learning? Mindset. When I learned this principle, as simple as it sounds, it has opened, listen, second only to the law of encounter, this is the most powerful spiritual law that I've learned. The law of honor has come as a subset of this. I have indoctrinated myself to show honor and to communicate gratitude. These two things have opened me up to a world of possibilities beyond my wildest imagination. Thank you. Somebody said thank you for 50 naira and that thank you today has given him a house. Somebody said thank you for a shoe and that has given him all kinds of things. You must learn to be grateful, be lavish in communicating gratitude. To men and to God and watch what begins to happen in your life you become Beulah and Hephzibah don't just meet people and the first thing you are looking for needs give me let me give you a secret as we wrap up anytime you see great people minimize asking for things every man's need is his point of contact I was teaching the leaders this morning and if people do not need your money they need your your reassurance your courtesy so I just want to thank you so much. Do you know, you would think that I haven't taught this thing for many years, I would be immune to it myself. I'm not talking of flattery. There are people who see me and, ah, Apostle, I'm so grateful. Usually when I'm passing, maybe at the airport and people want to do all kinds of things, I'm greeting them and someone says, Apostle, your message has changed my life. I'm, I just want to say thank you. And I feel very endeared. Oh, may God bless you. Come. God bless you. God bless you. 
and you see a little child how are you little girl god bless you what are you doing madam well i'm trusting god for this and that can that simple thing can become a the schedule of a change of season thou son of david he said have mercy on me he never called him jesus you are royalty from the root of david have mercy on me and jesus looks at him and says i'm busy but i will attend to you something about your communicating honor and desperation has called for my attention oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear oh speak from the heavens and i'll hear from the earth my altar is calling me oh God. my worship is calling you oh God my gratitude is calling meetings like this and I go home you would think I would just go and balance I smuggle myself into the room and go down my knees and I say Lord Jesus thank you some may trust in horses and chariots but you are the reason why we have these results including this night without fail Lord I thank you your child has come before you they call me all kinds of names but I know who I am before you I have come to return thanks you are the hand behind every result that we see and God says even at this level you can do it for me let's measure a thousand cubits you are ready for a new level some of you here may be business people maybe ministry maybe a career and you find out that you have plateaued at a level it may not be the absence of skill it may be the absence of honor and the absence of gratitude you can literally live of gratitude you can literally live of honor believe me you can spend your like they ask you what are you doing i'm working in first bank what are you doing i'm working in abu and they ask you what are you doing you say i'm a practitioner of honor and gratitude you literally can use it as a stream of income let the fire from your altar touch you. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Have you learned something tonight? If you've not learned anything from all that I've said, just pay attention to this that I said, God first is the secret to an excelling life. God first, not God among, not God later, not God as part of, God first. Number two, that the quality of your mindset is what defines the possibilities in your life listen you will see doors open for you beyond your imagination if you can pay the price can i tell you you may not have a job use the time to read quality books that kingdom compliant books that build your mind apostle i'm trusting god for a husband i'm trusting god for a wife while you are trusting keep reading what works on your mindset because if this version of you marries you will kill the man be walking on that mindset in the name of Jesus anger you must leave in the name of Jesus wickedness you must leave in the name of Jesus evil talking talking like a parrot in 10 minutes you have read a whole book in somebody's ears let it be out of my destiny in the name of Jesus I am ready for a great life and God says now you see it is often said that when the student is truly ready the teacher always comes are we together I'm ready for prosperity, but I don't have money. I don't know anything about finances. Then learn honor and gratitude. Start from there. Learn honor and gratitude. Go online. Principles of honor. Listen to messages and start praying. Gratitude. Get five people in your life who have made sincere contributions and send them a text. Sir, ma, 
this is just to appreciate you I had the opportunity to attend the service this night and I was challenged afresh again and I thought of communicating what I've learned thank you for all that you have been thank you for helping my children thank you for helping my husband or my wife this is simply saying thank you after two days you will get a text what is your name again I am so 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 and so see me in my office tomorrow and the person can say I have been doing this for everyone but nobody has done this I showed my wife your text and she said let us help this person and that's it look it is so easy to rise when you understand the power of kingdom systems hallelujah are you learning some of you even your biological parents you have not shown them love you have not shown them mercy you don't care after all they are your parents mama may not be able to speak english but she had to fry a cara to send you to school now that you have a job just counting fifty thousand and giving her is not gratitude that's responsibility gratitude is one day you will draw the chair and sit down with her there and say mama i want to tell you something i know that you see that i'm a big man today but i want to say thank you it was your sacrifice you went through so much to make this happen and mama is just crying there and say my son you have become a big man I don't have what to give you but let me place my hand on my chest and let me bless you may your children rise to be greater than you you will just say amen but it is recorded and archived in heaven you give birth to your child and one wicked person wants to come and be friends to your children that covenant will speak drive them far from you because mama left a blessing hallelujah forever for as long as I live I live a grateful life a grateful life when I came and got down out of the vehicle I was just nodding my head and walking I was almost in tears looking at the faithfulness of God the mercies of God many of you have forgotten what God has done in your life too soon because you are looking for something in front learn to be grateful carry that mindset learn to practice honor and you have scheduled a season of greatness let me recommend as an assignment go and listen to all my teachings on mindsets go and look for them go on YouTube look for them put it as a project sit down and listen don't assume don't say I was there have your life changed if the answer is no go and listen listen to it pray you can spend the day fasting and lock yourself Lord my destiny must change I am the one you are raising in this family to wipe the tears of people father I pray that you will use me as you the word of God is coming you are writing ah God is showing me what I'm doing wrong now the Sun will no more give you sunlight by day the moon will no more give you moonlight by night Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. Listen, you know why I raised this song? the power of illumination when your heart is sincere when you approach God with a meek heart you are ready for light it will be an adventure of light you will listen to a message you've been listening to every day but your heart condition is what defines the light that comes from that message to you there are people who have all kinds of messages oh this one I have it but that your heart is not yet prepared to receive the light so you will just listen to it attentively but you are not receiving anything Go back with a punched heart and now listen and you will find light that will bring tears out of your eyes. Man of God, hear me. Your destiny is waiting for you. Everyone here listening, whether you are inside all the overflows and those who are following online, make up your mind that this mindset thing, I will work on it. Don't say I am Yoruba. Don't say I am Igbo. Don't say I am Hausa. I was saying it to our Abuja family. He that comes from in the north is a northerner. 
he that comes from the south is a southerner he that comes from the east is an easterner he that comes from europe is a european and american and so on and so forth the bible says but he that cometh from above is above all so beyond your earthly geographic context you must start having the mind of christ embrace the character the traits of discipline embrace the traits of diligence and most importantly honor and gratitude and you have found the power keys you don't need to know everything but the interesting thing is that the results begin to come even while you are growing hallelujah I'm going to pray for you but we'll all pray by ourselves and then I'll speak over your life and we're done for tonight remember our text Joshua 1 verse 8 it says and this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do Joshua 1 and 8 you got it right go back 1 8 Joshua it says for then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and for God's sake, and even as a prophecy for everyone here, he says, thou shall have good success. The kind of success that God increases you on all sides. And while that is happening, the joy of salvation is bubbling within your heart. Your life becomes a conduit of impact. Not just accumulating money and accumulating relationships with no value. Are you seeing that now? Everything about your life becomes a blessing. Genesis 12 and verse 2 and 3. It says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's what I want to happen to my life. My, my desire is not to be said, Oh, this person is anointed or has this and has that. No, no that Jesus Christ was revealed through my life and that whilst revealing Jesus you were able to impact the lives of people someone will say apostle is because of you I had the privilege to go to school someone will say it's because of you I had the privilege to have a house a roof over my head I was when I saw the picture of the outreach yesterday that was done I was so humbled looking at these widows and looking at these people and that which happened to them and i was so inspired i said this is how to live this is how to live it's not about driving cars and eating whatever this is how to live it says oh teach us to number our days the bible says that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom right where you are sitting i want you to lay your hands on your head and i want you to begin to cry before the lord your maker pray from the depth of your heart thank you my precious people god bless you god bless you please begin to pray let it be from the depth of your heart God desires for you to grow. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Shabakata barakatos kade balato. Shabrantes kaberekos. Embrekate balakatos kafras kade beleta doshekate. Entas kata barata kafras kade belekate brantege balatosia. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands and declare, my destiny you must open up. Good success is my heritage in Christ. And in the mighty name of Jesus, everything that has enthroned itself above the knowledge of God in my life, I come against it now. In the name of Jesus, someone pray. Someone pray. Ashaparakata bareta pegedosiata, 
everything that has declined my prayer life everything that has declined my word study life everything that has declined my passion for the house of God my passion for the things of God I cry unto you God of heaven let there be a revival let there be a refiring of my spiritual life tonight someone pray ah, 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 ah. To the setting of the same, your name is to be adored. From the rising of the sun to the setting. said thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your might with all your soul with all your strength if you don't love him with all you don't love him if you don't love him with all you don't love him if you don't love him with all please pray don't be tired you've been sitting for a while pray pray take a few minutes to pray we are discussing the matters of your destiny Just a few minutes. Anoint my everything. You have my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. 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 Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. That nothing and no one will take your place in my life. That nothing and no one will rise above you in my life. That must be your determination tonight. To dethrone every idol. The idols of men. The idols of things. The idols of achievements. That they all bow at the feet of Jesus Christ. He alone be exalted as Lord and Christ. And then you watch the wonder working power of a victorious life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still laying your hands on your head. You are going to pray over your mind. Every stronghold, every demonic manipulation that is making me behave in a way that is driving success from me. Behaviors of dishonor, behaviors of carelessness, behaviors of indiscipline. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Every mindset, every stronghold locked up within my inside that is programming my actions, scheduling seasons of defeat, 
scheduling seasons of loneliness scheduling seasons of pain poverty failure in the name of Jesus the Lord rebuke you open your mouth and pray I rise above and beyond the grip of culture I rise above and beyond the grip of my past I rise above and beyond the grip of my associations I rise above and beyond the grip of my sociological context in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray can I give you one more prayer point every spirit and every covenant that has tied down those who went before me to produce a life of failure I declare you are broken concerning me open your mouth and pray every foundation of poverty every foundation of mediocrity whether territorial whether family the Bible declares that it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and that it shall be destroyed because of the anointing someone pray everything I saw my father suffer everything I saw my mother suffer everything I saw people from my region suffer by the blood of Jesus I am exempted from it exempted from begging exempted from failure exempted from poverty exempted from living a wasted life exempted from mediocrity exempted from smallness hallelujah listen please look at me we're wrapping up as simple as these principles are I found them and they changed my life when we seem to look very super super human these are the forces that we stand upon that elevates us and sometimes makes us look as if we are such a big deal we are not any big deal in ourselves except that when you stand on these laws you tame life like an animal let me speak over your life oh only oh only la sadisi who comes in the name of our god oh Holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes. I pray for every closed destiny here that has refused to open up in the name of Jesus the son of the living God even the one who helps men I declare may that door of your destiny be opened now may that door of your destiny be opened now may that door of your destiny be opened now hear me no matter what has gone wrong before now I prophesy to you remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old my God is giving you a new beginning my God is giving you a new beginning my God is giving you a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for everyone under the sound of my voice who might be under any kind of situation that is weighing on you maybe a financial challenge maybe you are in debt you are owing or there's something wrong and it looks like shame and reproach is imminent every time you get into these kinds of trouble it is the office of the prophetic that brings you out i decree and declare everything that looks like shame i call upon the god of my covenant 
in the name of Jesus let shame and reproach depart from your destiny 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 now I pray for you whatever has killed your prayer life your word study life maybe the challenges of life maybe you stepped into wrong associations that have downplayed God and downplayed the things of God let there be restoration now let there be restoration now finally we've spoken about good success let me pray for you the Bible says it was the Lord that advanced Aaron and Moses they did not just go forward they were advanced by God he says by you I can run through a troop by my God I can leap over a wall that a man can receive nothing even financially because I know that many of us here right now if I ask you to submit your prayer request about 70 to 80 percent of it will be largely financial issues God is able to help men to bring you out of financial shame let me speak over your life it will always come from God through men to you therefore in the name of Jesus anyone crying for financial help that God will come and bail you out I declare in the name of Jesus receive help receive help let help us arise for you in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus name we pray let me make an altar call now please no movement no movement whether inside or outside just be patient allow me make an altar call then I'll make a very important announcement about tomorrow and we're done you need Jesus every time we talk about Jesus there are people who do not care I hope tonight will be that night that you say Jesus I am truly ready you are here so many people inside all the overflows it is never too late for as long as you have breath in your nostrils to make it right with Jesus perhaps you were invited to come here or perhaps you have been here again and again but you have never consciously made that decision the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son it says that whosoever that blessing is for whosoever whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life eternal verse 17 says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him you are here and you mean it with Jesus you are saying apostle if you would give me a chance I would make it right with Jesus or you are here and you are saying apostle things from last year into this year my life has not really been the way it should be I have I have just fallen apart my life has gone haywire I need to put my life in order and make it right with Jesus I'm going to call these two categories of people if you are in the main auditorium here I'm going to request that you move forward we have a limited space here and then all those who are outside once the front is full you may make use of your various LEDs and for those who are following listening online it is not too late to make Jesus right to, to make things right with Jesus as far as your destiny is concerned I'm just looking for one person who can say apostle I'm not going to lie to myself I really need Jesus I'm going to count one to five whether you are inside or outside once the front is full here then you can come outside you can begin to come one celebrate them as they come Jesus the Son of God I believe in you I believe Koinonia, celebrate them as they come to Jesus Jesus, Jesus the Son of God the son of God I believe in you let me tell you ladies and gentlemen it is a glorious thing to see people come to Jesus sincerely the Bible declares that as many who will come to him 
he says he will in no wise cast away these precious ones representing all those who are scattered across the overflows and following online perhaps someone is just following from your home and right there in your silence Jesus is speaking to you I salute all of you who have come out it is never too late to make it right with Jesus may I please request that by as a way of surrender you lift your right hand above your head and please say this after me say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight till forever I am a child of God amen keep your hands lifted father thank you the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away these precious ones have come declaring your Lordship by the authority of Scripture I declare their sins forgiven and in the name of Jesus I call them bona fide recipients of eternal life from tonight you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and I declare by the authority of God's word that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life you walk in newness of life from tonight until forever you will spend your day serving Jesus for in the mightiest name of Jesus we pray amen and amen now very quickly I want you to please do me a favor just turn to your back you'll see the counselors waving their hands I like you to please follow them in concert they will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seat let's honor them let's honor them give them a big big God bless you hallelujah amen tonight so after the grace make sure you greet one another praise God hallelujah okay so um, please except for just a few people uh, that are necessary let's leave all specialized counselings and all of that let's leave it for tomorrow so that we can have some time to rest and refresh we still have tomorrow and then we'll do a bit of it before we leave so please accept if you have to otherwise God bless you and um, we'll get to see tomorrow but make sure let me emphasize again come tomorrow with your prayer request come tomorrow inviting everyone who you can bring on site and let's come and glorify Jesus and trust him to step in over our lives in Jesus name are you blessed let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit amen God bless you see you tomorrow